What is up guys, we doubles back here with a brand new video and today we're gonna be trying a fire tank new and improved bro at the end of 2022. Listen, I made a fire tank video, I think a couple of them, way before any support was even out for the archetype. There was just Blaze Ward, right? And uh, I really enjoyed it. You guys really enjoyed it too. It did really well. But now, my friends, they've not only added the Templar of Flame enchant, but they've buffed it with Season 8 to dedicate it to the tank archetype. So, we're going to be trying it from level 1, theory crafting it all the way to max, trying to make it work at max on our tank character you can see right here. So, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's jump right in. Okay, guys, level 25 on our tank character, May I Tank Please the Second. And we're going to be trying a fire tank today with a pretty cool little theory craft, starting at 25, because you know what? We don't always have to start at level 10. And I've got some cool stuff to show you guys to boot. So. First of all, let me tell you guys what we're going to be basing this entire character off of, and that is, my friends, the Templar of Flame enchant. Now, Templar of Flame has been out before, but it was crappier before. It didn't really have a proper niche. Most people try to probably make it work as a DPS spec. I know I did. But when you get to the very bottom of the enchant and it says it reduces your damage taken by 8%, but I think it was 6% before, you sat there thinking to yourself, why am I trying to make this work as a DPS spec? It doesn't even want to be a DPS spec, but it also didn't really want to be a tank spec either. They've reworked it though with season 8 and we'll see if it's good enough to finally make a fire tank viable. We've been trying to do fire tanks or any tank. I've done ice tank. I've done everything dude for a long time and every time we do these types of builds they do eventually release some way to make them work. I mean for example I did uh, like the shadow hybrid before there was any support for it. We have the fire tank before there's any support for it. Frost DPS before there was any support for it. I mean any of these little wacky niche builds that we could possibly get our hands on trying to be creative we did and sometimes they actually reward us with stuff like this so let me read out to you what this is going to do so first of all it transforms seal of righteousness typically a spell power version of a seal um, into seal of fervor dealing fire damage and in addition the threat of my flame strike is increased by hundred percent unleashing the seals energy will deal direct fire damage to the target and additional fire damage over three seconds if cast on an enemy afflicted by flame strike I then do aoe damage to everybody within eight yards affected by the flame strike with my judgment. Big. Lots of AoE, that's really what you want to have a nice, comfortable playing tank spec. Lastly, in addition, my judgments will now trigger the fire starter capstone effect and increase the threat of my next dragon's breath or blast wave by 100%. And for six seconds after using judgment, dealing damage with flame strike reduces the cooldown of blast wave and dragon's breath by two seconds, and it can only trigger every two seconds. Also, just using seal of fervor gives me, as we pointed out before, 8% reduced damage taken, so that's supposed to be the main tank thing. I mean, threat's a big deal, but uh, reducing damage taken is an even bigger deal. Now, we're going to be combining this with Flame Burst, brand new enchant. It came out a little later than some of the other brand new World Forge enchants. I'll put up on the screen right now where I found this, because I honestly don't even remember. And, uh, yeah, it's actually a pretty interesting little enchant. People were kind of trying to theorycraft, like, what does this even do? You know, back before they told you what the enchants do, they used to hide it, like, a month and a half ago, what every enchant did that was brand new, so you literally didn't know if it was worth your time. I suspected it was an instant cast version of the spell and lo and behold as you can see it is basically an instant cast flame strike no cast time is what i'm trying to get at guys and uh it should do everything and work with everything that regular flame strike does and works with so i'm hoping if i don't have to cast the flame strike and it has all this synergy with the uh, templar of flame an instant cast flame strike with 100 percent more threat might actually be pretty good so the idea right now at level 25 is going to be the flame strike everybody's afflicted by the flame strike effect i judgment if i'm not out of mana of course and uh then everybody's going to take more damage we'll see if that works everybody's taking more threat and i like that now for my starter spells plus what I've gotten so far, I have actually gotten quite lucky, and that's why I think this character is worth showing. I've already gotten the nuts when it comes to this build, and nowadays, with how bad we've learned the RNG is, if I'm honest with you guys, if the build doesn't end up good in the first one or two prestiges, I start to get PTSD. I mean, honest to God, I start to feel hopeless. It's probably meant to be, that's why it's worth showing. So we have the Flame Strike, of course. We have Divine Protection, bro. With the Divine Sacrifice, we have Judgment of Light, we have Righteous Fear, I'm not going Mana Forge Barrier, and I'll tell you why. Mana Forge Barrier puts this big ugly shield on me, and I don't like the way it makes my dude look. So I often try to make spell power tanks work with Righteous Fury, just so I don't have to look that way. This is actually decent, though. Righteous Fury has been reworked on Ascension to increase your total armor by 10%, so this is obviously going to be very synergistic with shields, because there's a lot of talents that give you more armor from your shield, and it also increases your spell damage by 30% of your stamina, so 
I'm all about armor, all about damage reduction talents. Uh, I'm going to get my block cap. I'm going to get anything I can with dodge and even with parry. While this stance is active, my threat is increased. I do 10% reduced damage, and it now has an increased chance to block fierce blows attached to it. That's actually really good as well. Seal of Fervor. Uh, this is the upgraded version of Seal of Righteousness that comes from the enchant we talked about. So that's pretty cool. It looks like it has the same animation, unfortunately, but it does fire damage and it's neato. Uh, if we move on down, Holy Nova in case we pious strikes, we'll see Earthshock Healing Wave, kind of meh. Charge though with Heroic Strike and Rend. So we've actually got a really nice little starter build. Now, as for my skill cards, boys, we are going to be going for the Avenger Shield. I'm hoping to get more damage reduction off some talents concerning this and a silence effect that's going to be nice. Blast Wave. So this is going to be the main way that I do the fire shenanigans I want to do. We do not have a Dragon's Breath card. Of course, I got super lucky finding this. I actually had to get this from the skill card shop. It is the very first epic ability I have found from the skill card shop in three months. The amount of cards I've wasted, tickets that is, re-rolling, trying to get something good, is actually criminal, to be honest with you, because of how much time it takes to get those tickets. But we did get the Blast Wave, so this is probably the best one, to be honest with you, between the two for PvE, and uh, maybe, and we'll see, uh, but I think it's going to be good. Holy Shield, of course, you can't use Shield Block with this. It's going to be completely different now, 100% chance to block for five seconds. You get more armor from your shield, see what I mean? Ardent Defender can protect you from dying once, regardless of cooldown. See, that's really good. And then we have the Molten Armor, just for theme, 75 fire damage when hit. That's really cool. For my lucky cards, Flame Strike, but we got that. Tremor Totem, Enhancement Mastery, because I want Flame Tongue Weapon, right? Shield Slam and Blessing of Sank, all pretty much what you would expect. Flame Tongue Weapon is just for theme, of course. This seems pretty good. This seems like it's going to be extremely thematic, and it's going to run really well, even in Mythic Zero, I think, right? I've got a bunch of gear I can put on when I get there. We'll start gearing once again, and I'll hopefully do some Mythic Plus tanking with the fire build. Um, you know, Craig would be proud. What is up, guys? McDouble's back again with a brand new video, and today I've got Craig for you guys. Say hello to Craig once again. He's coming back. Actually, he's about to die. If you remember those videos, man, Craig would be proud of where the fire tank has come. If Craig could have played with Templar of Flame, he would have, and he would have been extremely happy. But you know what? We don't have to think about the past. Well, let's get to the freaking present. Let's get to the future. I'm going to go ahead and start queuing for a random dungeon, playing fire build early on. 600 mana is scary. I might go intellect to counteract that. But anyway, guys, let's jump into the first dungeon. All right, so let's go, guys. I'm going to try to pull with my judgment if it's just one target. I can actually horn right here, flame strike. It's going to be tough without a taunt and other minor abilities, because right now I just have Flame Burst and AoE Judgment, which is nice. But I think if I just don't pull way too much, I'll be okay. Like, I'm already out of mana. But when I use Judgment, I get more mana. And plus, we're going to be gaining fast levels. What do we get? Disengage, Amplify Magic, Smite. I'll take Smite. So Divine Sacrifice is kind of dookie at low levels, but what I can do here is pull extra hella big and then just pop Divine Protection. So Flame Strike, Flame Strike on that guy, on those guys. Everybody's going to run towards my Flame Strike. Watch this, guys. Watch this. Nobody, you've never seen anybody do this, right? So this is where I've decided that I'm going to do this. I pull them all to this one little spot. Every single guy, it's better when I saved my horn, but I didn't, right? And every little guy is going to run at me. Isn't that amazing? So I'm level 27 right there. As long as you get aggro, right? That's why I typically horn and just have people relax for a second. Everything stacks on me and we AoE it down. But that was perfect too, honestly. So I'll just flame strike that pack. Judgment them as well. I get that fire damage off on every single guy that has flame strike on them prior to the judgment going off. So we can flame strike up here. Flame strike right here. So they run through it again. Just maintaining threat. Now I want to double check this flame strike thing. So uh, we're just going to actually eat this. So did it go on everybody? Or did I do does it do damage or apply a dot? So I'm just spamming flame strike. We're going to go for one more judgment here. Because I want to make sure Flame Burst is working with this. Because if it's not, Ascension has some splaining to do. Because that's dookie dookie design. Fireball, Redemption, Scorpid Sting. Um, you know what? I'll take the Fireball. I doubt we go Maelstrom Weapon. But if we wanted to, I guess it's an option, you know? Ooh, uh, we have... Oh, I've never seen Earth Borer. It actually dropped. Holy crap. Can I win it? Am I lucky? We could pop some cooldowns. Go for the Judgment right here. Um, I, sh I could actually have popped Divine Sacrifice there because people were taking damage. I need to be more mindful of it. You know, I do get in these mindsets of, well, it's not really good right now, basically ever. And then the 1% chance of it being good pops up and I don't do anything. I'm going to need, I did not win, Jesus. Both of our rolls equaled 100 though. That's interesting. I've literally never seen that drop before, like at all, since the beginning of season eight to now. Okay, double flame strike. I still, okay, I want to make sure I'm reading this right. It says, if cast on an enemy afflicted by flame strike, the burning damage will spread. 
Oh no. Don't tell me they made Flame Burst and once again, like they've done this before. I think they had some bogus response for it. To me, I know what the truth is. It was an oversight. Water walking regrowth. There's my blast wave. Can I not use Flame Burst with the perfect build for Flame Burst? That might actually be it. It might just not work with Flame Strike, even though it's going to work off modifiers and stuff like that. Oh no, 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 no. Thing is, I do have the blast wave now, so I can create instant Flame Strikes eventually with blast wave. And that's what the whole uh, fire starter thing is, right? So you can see it right here. It's the capstone bonus that we're looking at. The final rank of this talent says blast wave makes my next flame strike instant and no mana and do 30% more direct damage. So, okay, we all knew that, right? I did that with the original fire tank. That was still a talent that existed. That was part of the whole deal. There just wasn't any support for it. Uh, but if flame burst doesn't work, wow. Is it not working off the increased threat or anything either? Okay, the threat of my blast wave goes up right there, by the way, guys. So I can do like that. And I'm going to get an enchant eventually, by the way, that's actually going to make my blast wave uh, not push everybody back, which I think is probably correct. All right, flame strike over there. I'm still doing more threat with flame strike. I'm just not doing way more as you would expect with the new version of this uh, enchant blast wave. It's not horrible actually to push them off. I wonder if it's even like a big deal because I don't take damage if they're pushed off me, but they're still threaded to me. If that makes sense, right? Lol. Divine sacrifice because that guy's off me and I have to wait for the mana for judgment. So there is some awesome little synergy right there. Keep myself facing them so I still block, but I want to move a little bit. We'll just judgment and then we'll flame burst right there as they charge in. We'll blast wave and look, my healer has time to heal me. Perceivably, there we go. And only because I pushed them away with the blast wave. So that's making me wonder, like it's one of those things like in theory versus in practice. In theory, it feels like you'd want to remove the pushback just so you're just, you know, being less annoying, I guess, in your dungeon. Like, what's the point? It's like people who thunderstorm your pack, right? But in practice, the small knockback from Blast Wave on the tank and not on a DPS actually feels interestingly good. I'll trail myself with a flame strike. Those guys are going to get damaged by it. All right, last boss. This has been kind of dicey with the flame burst, but we made it through. We're close to Firestarter, I think. Oh, no, level 50, dude. We're level 34, so yeah, 16 more levels. What do we get right here? Disengage, Righteous Defense, Lesser Healing Wave. I'll take Righteous Defense. We don't have a taunt right now, so I'll honestly just take it. Plus, honestly, all of my icons are matching right now. Fire and Holy is a pretty cool mix. Okay, so here's what I did. I, as you can see, leveled up to 53-ish real quick. I wanted to be able to use Firestarter for the rest of this video because Flame Burst doesn't work with the RE the way you would intuitively think it should. But I did discover some awesome synergy. Now, I talked about how I did didn't know if I wanted to remove the knockback away from Blast Wave because I saw utility, but you know what's better than that utility? If I'm honest with you guys, a 10 second cooldown on Blast Wave. That's insane. That's insane. Let me tell you how I did it. First of all, we get 10 seconds off on Blazing Speed. Also, just apparently taking melee damage if I fall below 35% health makes me run fast. Now, this is obviously more of a, let's say, a PvP thing, but I'm mostly in it for that cooldown reduction. Now, if you play any kind of mage, you already know that 10 seconds off isn't going to bring me to 10 because it's not a 20 second cooldown uh, normally. So how else did I do that? Well, it turns out the controlled blast RE that removes the knockback actually also reduces the cooldown by 15 more seconds. And that's basically how I did it. So I've got a uh, trinket right now with controlled blast on it. And that's how I'm making this happen. Same thing with Templar of Flame. We'll extract it when we get to max. So a 10 second blast wave. Let me remind you why that's good. You go into the fire mage tree, you take fire starter. And once again, every blast wave, every 10 seconds gives me a free flame strike that's instant cast cost no mana and does 30% more damage. It also works properly with everything else I'm using. Yes, this would be best if I got the Dragon's Breath. Then I could use both of these, you know, uh, one after the other. A lot more consistency. I've already got things like the Avenger's Shield. I've got the uh, Shield of Righteousness, weirdly. I got the Rebuke. I mean, these are amazing spells. This is actually damn near perfect. I even got my Taunt. The only thing I would need to make this perfect is the Dragon's Breath, but... For now, a 10 second blast wave I think is good enough. So let's finish off leveling to 60 and then we'll be able to test it at max. Okay, more WC. I'll take it, I guess. Now, this is the one thing I actually completely forgot that might make Dragon's Breath not matter. It's the whole point of the build, bro. Uh, but we haven't been able to use it until now, which is that just using Judgment is what's proccing my fire starter. I don't have to rely on the blast wave. This means that Blast Wave and Judgment are actually good enough. Now, Dragon's Breath would still be good. It's just not say all be all have to be depressed if we don't get it type of thing now, which is a really big deal. I'm already seeing a huge power level increase. The extra threat from the Flame Strike, that seems to be working. Remember, Judgment's also AoE. And we should be getting the extra fire damage now. So let's go ahead and test that on this next pack. All right, so I built it up once again with the Judgment. We'll Flame Strike right here. Okay, this should be it, right? They're all in the Flame Strike and I Judgment. Oh, yeah. 
Look, two guys had the righteous uh, judgment of fervor on them. That's great. Flame strike right there. I'm not taking any damage. I'm all into block right now. As much block as I can get. And uh, they're far enough away from me that I can just keep on running, hopefully. And okay, there we go. End of dungeon. Thank goodness. Okay, we have our first draft right here. Pretty much all garbage. I will take the disengage because I could card swap it away. Smoke bomb or something would be better. All right, five more levels to go. Okay, guys, we are in a... I think this is a mythic. I actually think I'm that stupid, right? Yeah, I immediately went into a mythic with this build. I'll show you the talents and stuff, but I just want to jump into it real quick and just see how this works. We've got everything you would think we should have uh, with the blaze ward now being accomplished, and this is an oldie but a goodie. Taking direct damage or avoiding an attack does fire damage to everybody around me that causes a high amount of threat. The DPS are already running ahead, by the way, so. We literally got two dragon warriors up in here. The diversity is pretty freaking amazing, isn't it? All right, at least I'm immediately getting threat from these two high DPS guys. That's actually really nice. Hopefully they do not pull guard Fengus. I don't want to fight him at all. I definitely want to go for a tribute run because it's just more loot and also way faster too. Ultimately, the majority of the loot is going to come from completing the dungeon and opening up one of those caches and hoping we get something good. I really don't have the best gear on this guy. Uh, we're talking 57 item level. Easily my worst geared guy so far. Okay, stuff's actually coming for some reason. Pull those guys. Apparently it jumped over and got the ones over there as well. I did not think that was going to happen. So we have the flame strike. There we go. Blaze ward. Here's another flame strike. I was testing this on some uh, dummies, the AOE ones. I was actually surprised by how much damage I could do um, and how consistent and how little mana problems I have. In fact, I have none. The judgment giving me mana back is enough. I really didn't know how mana intensive this was going to be. To me, it was a crapshoot, you know? Flame strike, right? Like you would just think spamming flame strike would suck, but you reduce the mana cost by so much, it just doesn't matter at all. So I can pull this, but I can also interrupt it immediately. I like that my uh, LVI tells everybody to. It's like, yes, I followed the mechanics. So we're just going to keep spamming the Shield of Righteousness. And uh, if these guys killed it faster, I would keep moving. Okay, I'll just do it. Carry on Swarmers and stuff. We can Blast Wave. It does not push anybody away. I don't want that one to get away either. Let's get all these guys on me. Let's go for the Divine Protection. I have, I think, a 12 and a half second Divine Protection. Okay, all that's going to die. We're going to keep moving. I have so many poisons on me, but I do actually have Cure Poison. I'm not curing all that. Honestly, it's just not going to happen. But uh, we'll keep going. Let's pull with this. This silences the wandering eye, which is nice. Personally, I want to keep going. So I'm going to blast wave right here. That had extra thread on it. Flame strike right after that. I want to divine sacrifice as things get a little bit messy. Jump right up on this ledge right here. Keep on going up. Don't want to pull anything. Let's see if these guys can match my skill, right? Are they going to pull anything? No, they don't, which is really awesome. I am going to pull this pack. Let's not make things messy. I am going to interrupt this guy. There's a blast wave right there into a flame strike. And I'm going to actually get pushed. All right, there we go. Silence. And it got the right pack. That's what I was hoping for. But if I'm honest, I didn't know if it was going to work. I was afraid it might pull the far pack. Uh, okay, I think we're fine. Flame strike right there. Healer seems like they don't have much of a problem keeping me up. Threat seems to be pretty good. I think I have no threat problems right now. Definitely have damage problems, but considering my item level is really low for a mythic, that's to be expected, you know what I mean? Ultimately, the DPS is really strong, so I can afford to be, you know, messy with it like this. If I actually thought I was going to die, I would not do this. Okay, let's go ahead and silence that before it summons anything, which is nice. Into the flame strike right here, which has additional threat. I gotta keep making sure you guys know that. The flame strike is a lot better than it seems. Oh, and by the way, we are actually going to utilize a pretty interesting little enchant. We don't have it on yet, but it's going to give us 30% more fire damage threat. Uh, yeah, that should be strong. I'm going to replace one of these Aegis enchants, I think. This guy just asked McDoubles who showed you that build. Nobody. Believe it or not, not only are builds easy to make on Ascension, but also they're extremely obvious. You know, I just look at Templar of Flame and it makes sense what goes with the build. You know, <laughs> that's also why I don't post anything on the Hero Architect. I mean, I have two main reasons. Number one, I do not want people upvoting my stuff just because it's me, because not every build is created equal that I make, to be honest with you. So let's make it honest. Let's let people actually have a fair chance. But number two, um, I don't think any build I make is truly mine and vice versa for anybody else. Somebody's figured it out. Somebody's done it. Sure, they might not post it, but these things aren't that complex. There's very rarely something that's that complex that it becomes uniquely yours and nobody's tried it before. I'm not saying it's impossible. Okay, so we're on the last boss, King Gordok. I do want this guy over here on me, so he is on me now. He used to be able to LOS, and I think he would actually run towards you over here. But I guess that wouldn't actually be any good anyway for the tribute run, because you don't want to kill the caster to do the tribute run, in case you didn't know, right? Even though we do a lot of Dire Mall North on this channel, it's one of my favorite dungeons in vanilla. It's fast, it's free loot, it's an easy, solid way of testing yourself, because there is a wide array of different mechanics. You have the silence mechanic, 
mechanics, you do definitely need an interrupt, you know, for some of those guys, the wandering dudes that we saw before. Lots of these guys do big damage. You have to skip certain bosses. It's interesting, you know? Okay, he's dead. Ooh, World Forge key fragment. I definitely want as many of those as I can possibly get my hands on. And we've got, uh, I don't think I want to take any of this DPS gear. I will greed on it because I do want to be able to vendor this stuff. I do need to start making some money, to be honest with you. But yeah, I'm actually surprised. We did do our freaking daily, man. Oh, I just, I'm hoping for a patch soon, guys. I'm hoping for a patch that's going to reinvigorate everything. But I got to tell you, right now in this moment, completing the daily, getting through this dungeon, zero wipes, everything went good. I actually enjoyed the play style of it. I'm real happy about that. All right, do, is that an upgrade shield right there? I do have a 61 barrier shield. So the 64 mythic one is definitely a major upgrade. Look at that. All that green, bro. All right, let's go ahead and eat on that. I see a counterattack lodestone. That's parry. Currently, none of my trinkets really give me tank stats, right? I mean, I have armor on one of them, but that's good. It's just it's so little armor. It might as well not exist. I will take that if I can get my hands on it. The rest, I am going to greed. I've been in this uh, mode of just passing on everything. Very try hard and elite. It's just like you're too good for five gold or something like that, right? Uh, but honestly, I'm way past that now. I need the gold, like I said. So in my head, I'm wondering if I should spam Skolomance, right? Because I could get the mythic uh, blood mail set for Skolomance. That might work or death bone might be good as well. We'll have to figure it out That might actually be the goal of this video is just to spam Skolomance for a perfect tank set of gear for this Okay, GG though. Let's go turn the daily in and see what we get. Okay. I'm actually really happy with the reward here I wonder I think they buffed it and i'm just forgetting but 2500 marks for heroic daily actually does feel extremely generous That's nice that we get a call board cash still might have gear that's usable uh, you do get to a point, sadly, where it's basically worthless, but hey, what do we get? Blast a target for 35 fire damage. If that had stam and not strength, I'd use it, but right now I'm using a fell striker. Chance on hit, all attacks are guaranteed to land and will be critical strikes for the next three seconds. It's cute, it's fun, I'm gonna use it, why not? But yeah, none of this other stuff's any good. I will put on the barrier shield, though, like I said, we'll keep that, and I will use the counterattack lodestone, so we'll do that. And uh, what about my mythic dungeon spoils? I guess we go strength, but what if I did miscellaneous? Let's try that. Stone of the Earth, I would finally get a 2H parry sword, and it's it's not even that video, bro. Of course. And what else do we get? Just a pointless ring. I am going to keep that in case we ever do 2H parry again, though. All right, we're doing the dual daily. They recently buffed the amount of marks you get. This is free marks, by the way, because watch this. If you're in a party, just so I can show you guys, it seems obvious, but sometimes we don't think all the way. I say that because I certainly didn't. Uh, but if this guy just forfeits five times, I get the freaking quest completed as well. So all we have to do is keep accepting and forfeiting. I get a thousand free marks. I don't even know if I need to do rerolls on this guy. In fact, as you can see based on how many marks I've stacked up, and I really haven't done a lot on this guy comparatively to my other ones, right? But my tank builds seemingly just come out better often than any of my other builds. All right, GG though, I'll take that. So guys, I'm not gonna show any of the names of the people in this party. I queued for something though. I was in second place DPS the entire time. And so it was going really slow and it just was going so badly like I couldn't believe it so I have to wait out this 10 minute timer because this rarely happens to me but sometimes it's just better to say you know what hopefully somebody queues in here that's more apt to take on this dungeon than I am you know what I mean and we'll just keep queuing for Skolo and hopefully we get some loot I just don't want to be the guy that's doing all the DPS when I'm the tank however what I can do for you guys right now is show you the random enchants I'm using as I said we are going to go ahead and replace Aegis with this awesome little enchant right here that gives me more fire threat let's see where is it here it is Fearing fire, 30% more fire damage threat. I'll take that. And that leaves me with the following. Two ages for now, but that's probably going to be replaced. Fearing fire, shield spec, three of those for 3% more block. Sacred duty. Duty. 30 seconds off the cooldown of Divine Protection. Lots of synergy with that. Deflection just for a little bit of extra parry. Guarded by the Light, 1.5 seconds longer on Divine Protection. Controlled Blast, Templar of Flame, Blaze Ward, and Precision for a little bit more hit rating. I think we're not even hit capped right for melee. It's never going to happen for spells, right? It's just one of those things as a tank that you kind of have to deal with. Like, Retail WoW, typically they have this stuff built in for tank classes. However, I do think this is basically spot on right now, so I'm really happy with this. We have a 12.5 second Divine Protection. We have a eight second holy shield. Wow. And we have a silence on the Avenger shield. A lot of baseline damage reduction. Really, really strong overall. I mean, I just love that I actually got seal of fervor, flame tongue weapon, and the molten armor as thematic as it gets. And we have the sink for more mana if we needed it. But at the very bare minimum, it's 5% more stamina. Always good. I'll take it. Wow. So first of all, we just got done with another mythic Skolomance. This one worked perfectly. We got all the way through and outside of occasionally being too big 
for my bridges with some of my pulls. I mean, y'all know how it is, right? I try to pull everything. I have a pretty firm grasp of when to use my cooldowns, and sometimes I make it out of fights that I don't deserve to make it out of, so I like to push the limits. Despite the fact that we did push it a bit too far some of those times, I would say it was a pretty damn easy run on the overall. And uh, yeah, we have a crazy amount of AoE. Now, I have added something. I realized that taking Flame Burst away means, duh, I only have two epic enchants. There aren't that many options that I can get unless I get lucky with different abilities, let's say like Avatar, but I could go with the Echoing Power because I did nail the Flame Shock. If you don't know what this is, it's actually interesting. It's a way to gain threat and tank applicability for using Shaman Shocks. You get 30% more threat with all your Shaman Shocks, and Earth, Frost, and Flame Shock each give a different effect if you have the Booming Echoes talent. Admittedly, taking this talent is probably incorrect every time, but this is like a placeholder one for me right now. But the cool thing is that after I Flame Shock, which of course does more threat now, I also just do more fire damage to everybody that attacks me. I thought that was extremely thematic, but the whole point of me even clicking record now is this. Dragon's Breath. We just got it offered to us. Now I have to free up a talent point. And if I'm honest with you, we just don't have a lot of talent points to uh, waste, you know, to throw on random stuff. You are strapped for talents with something like this. You know, you have a lot of fire mage talents. You need to make this work five, I think. But we'll take the dragon's breath. Take it over the drain soul for now. I was going to go for maybe void walker, but honestly, I hate pets. Not in real life. I love them in real life, but pets on ascension, bro. Anyway, dragon's breath is a huge mega win. So we have the dragon's breath now. And I have 16 more hands of faith that I want to roll real quick just to see if we get avatar if we do have avatar we can finally utilize shield of the emperor but what sucks about that amazing new enchant is that it requires a legendary legendaries aren't really the hardest thing in the world to get but it's definitely one of those things where you can easily reach max and just not get it at all and then you think well i can play my build without it typically uh but wouldn't it have been nice if i got it now the big diff with this is that i need the legendary so i can't do that right so we just have to hope we get lucky that's what i'm trying to say like really seriously get lucky only nine more of these to go everything else is literally perfect though and we can keep using booming echoes even if we don't get it it's not a big deal but i would recommend shield of the emperor for sure and just incorporating the shield slam into the rotation maybe just replace shield of righteous or use both you know i don't know okay yeah we didn't get it but it's fine we'll keep using this i want to show you another amazing thing look at all this gear in my inventory bro four death bone pieces one scolomance and we even got blood mail which i think is better but i only got one of these it's a little less good because I get less armor, I would assume, right? Plate on death bone, mail on blood mail. But they reworked blood mail on ascension. This is probably their best rework ever. I mean, just look at these laggards, man. Strength, intellect, spell power, defense rating, and hit rating. It's a mosh posh of different stats, but if you are a niche intellect, you know, spell power hybrid tank, maybe crimson champion, for example, any elemental tank that uses a shield, for example, with righteous fury like we are, I actually think this would be this. It has awesome set bonus pieces too. You even get five defense rating for only two pieces which is like a really big deal but because we only got one piece for now let's use death bone death bone is still pretty good lots of block value that's really great lots of defense rating lots of stamina really this is like a safe bet right still get that defense rating two piece as well okay and a mythic strat the dead version and uh yeah this one went pretty well again i'm pulling as big as i possibly can i haven't even put on my new gear yet and this is one of those dungeons that really tests you but luckily my kit comes with all the pieces right so tremor totem them, dragon's breath for interrupts rebuke for interrupts as well i have lots of ways to close a gap with that dragon's breath pull guys really this is perfect avatar would be the only thing that i would actually want to go with this and maybe the shield slam of course as well but even so this is actually really perfect for what it is booming echoes does feel good it's a little too much because of the talents you need for it but uh you know i like the fact that when i'm attacked molten armor is giving them more damage my uh flame shock is now giving my opponents more damage taken of course and i'm spamming my awesome flame strike flame strike flame strike combos and it's pretty good so the only thing i really need to do is up my mitigation and that's what we're currently doing by getting more gear and yeah as a result of that it was kind of hard sometimes i started to zone out towards the very end of the dungeon but uh i do think we could actually do m plus right now if i played very very serious so i think we might try to tackle our key before the end of this video and just see if we can even do it but for now, let me show you what I got from this dungeon. We just got Bone Spike Shoulders. That's my shoulders right there. More damage when I'm attacked. Although it says now 60 to 90 damage when I block, dodge, or parry, or I'm the victim of a melee attack. So that's pretty interesting. But my friends, that is not all. I also got the Stone Skin Gargoyle Cape. That's an oldie but a goodie, right? It gives me defense rating, which I think is what I want over anything else right now. I'm not defense cap, so we're going to take that. And I got a weapon, boys. I'm going to replace the Fell Striker with a more tank-oriented weapon 
weapon. I don't have expertise. It would be nice to have a little bit. Haste, nine stamina though, but I also drain my target for two shadow damage and transfer it to myself. So maybe a little bit of extra self healing. Like I said, I need more mitigation or just more ways to live. I'm going to use that. The stamina is the main thing there. We do scale pretty well off that. So look at all those new items, man. So quickly too. All right, it's time to actually put it on and enchant it. Okay, before we do an M plus though, here's something that's just different. Dire Mall East. Let's try tanking that. I haven't tanked this the entirety of season eight. I wonder if I could get that mythical boon with heroic leap. Let's just try. Wow, I can. Interesting. I'll grab that, jump on down. Everybody else gets it too. Pop that slow fall before we get there. I think I just wiped us, but uh, now I do have all of my gear on now. Four set for death bone. Got the new shoulders and everything. So we're looking good. DPS pulling without me. Why not? We've recovered though. Dragon's breath on all these guys. So the standard rotation for this is pretty simple. You want to go for the judgment on cooldown. That's going to be mostly a mana thing as well. Because honestly, with the dragon's breath, it does change things. But you want to go for the judgment. After judgment, you can go for the blast wave. Uh, and then after Blast Wave, you go for Dragon's Breath. But in between all of those, you have to interweave the Flame Strike, the instant free proc that we're getting from Firestarter that costs no mana. It's super strong, guys. So far, I've just been pulling with the Flame Shock or just trying to remember to throw it up in between that rotation as early as possible just to get off that extra damage. And uh, on single target, I toss in the Shield of Righteousness, especially when I'm low. It's a little bit of extra healing. And uh, we do actually talent into it, though. Uh-oh, this guy's on me real quick. Oh, God, I think everything's getting pulled or uh, oh no somebody said they aggroed it in chat never mind but yeah as i was saying we have divinity which is 12 percent more healing reduce my damage taken by six percent and increase my healing power by 60 percent of my stamina i just have to have strength as my main stat but i'm really going for the capstone bonus that says when i'm healed and i'll just say it right now even though we uh, are in a fight it'll actually reduce the cooldown of holy shield and divine protection there's so much synergy with this right now as we miss our avengers shield uh, i really do think like that's an amazing little core they've really done a good job i will say of differentiating, at least in my opinion, uh, the Paladin from the Warrior versions of the Shield Block tank. They weren't that different before, other than Pally versions have some holy spells here and there. Uh, but with this whole Divine Protection, you're reducing the cooldown, but increasing the duration with Talents and RE's as well. Same concept with Holy Shield. Holy Shield's 100% block now, and also the armor from your shield. It's really neat. I really do like it. I will just say that. Now, you mix in all the fire spells, though, and you just have a cooler version of a Pally tank, in my honest opinion. Is that new? That must have been new, and I just didn't see it. That's not normal. There's no way that's normal. The stats on that are way too high compared to a normal thing of this level see and the thing is i like the stats like those are obviously good stats those are the stats that a player would put on it because they would think to themselves i want something that has stats like that it's that simple you know what i mean but it's possible that's too high so apparently they pulled a bunch of guys and it should be yeah this guy says it's his bad in chat it's okay it doesn't matter but i was just curious like i'm always afraid as the tank that someone's gonna pull something I'm not going to notice they pulled something and they're going to get mad at me. It's that like a sad little bit of PTSD from being a wild tank as well. It's like you're so gaslit 24 seven. If you're the tank or the healer, it's absolutely incredible. So we have the divine protection up and that's going to be for 12 and a half seconds. We're not taking a lot of damage, but I think everybody's dying and I have no idea why. Now, one thing to keep in mind, 30% more threat with my fire damage stuff from that RE that gives threat earlier in the video. That's working with flame tongue weapon theoretically, right? I mean, it is fire damage. So my auto attacks are giving me more threat. It's intensely well done it is intensely well done i've always wanted an enchant that worked like this god craig would be so damn proud it's not even funny but yeah like this guy he's mostly just pally and that's basically it a little bit of fire mage okay this guy's finally dead holy crap like everybody on this freaking team is dead man all right what do we get a clever hat it's intellect okay at least they can meet me at the front now instead of running all the way to us as we, you know, try to finish the boss. But yeah, the talents are pretty cut and dry. I'll have it in my Discord. It's all pally all day. It really is a newbie's build. Like there's a lot of stuff going on, but most of this is commons. And uh, yeah, I got really lucky with my defensive cooldowns, but this is basically perfect at the same time. So it gives you an idea of what to shoot for. I also think I could get away with way less than this. As long as you've got that flame strike with the judgment of light and either the blast wave or the dragon's breath. Although I guess the blast wave is better for the shorter cooldown if you only have one because honestly i can do without 10 seconds on blast wave now that i have dragon's breath so that kind of saves me three talents but we'll leave it here for now and just like keep the blazing speed but it's something to think about for a future iteration of the build right maybe that actually does allow me to use booming echoes without it feeling bad and i could put three points into something that's more mitigating but at the moment just to give you an idea of where we're at and this should really tell you a lot i've only got 36 percent block 10% parry and 8% dodge. We are far, far from where we need to be. 
and uh, we get away with it anyway. 8.4k armor is actually not bad for what we are, though. Honestly, look at the blast wave cooldown right here as I play. Do you see how quickly it's coming back? I use it here. I flame strike. Just watch it drop. See how it starts dropping? This guy, I'm paying too much attention to it, but look, we'll just, like, gain all this aggro with blast wave. Oh, God. I even lagged for a second there. Am I going to die? I think I might not. I can dragon's breath this, but this is actually insane. I should try to LOS, but I don't want to LOS the healer. I have no idea where the healer is. And this is too crazy for me to, yeah, that was way too crazy to be honest with you, especially considering how things were on the second boss. I should have known that was going to happen. Okay. So that was honestly a lot of doo-doo butter. Like I had a super good attitude that dungeon. And at the very end, when I uh, started maybe three, four seconds before everyone else, you know, piled on, it was not why we wiped. I'll tell you that much. The healer couldn't keep me up. My mitigation's probably too low for that pull right now. I mean, it's not a biggie, you know, but the dude that kept making all the mistakes throughout the dungeon had the audacity to call me an idiot in chat. It's just like, come on, man. What is this universe we live in? This earth, man. Take me back. I don't know where the hell I came from, but please take me back. Okay, guys, so truth of the matter is, like, I can't find a dungeon right now. Let's just get this video out. We did quite a few mythics, got crazy amounts of gear. We went up, like, five item levels. And, hey, fire tank's really good, and we nailed a perfect version of it. Like I said, build will be in my Discord. Let's log over to my main guy, McDoubles, though, and uh, let's do a giveaway from the last video. Okay, guys, picking a winner. Let's see who wins. There we go. Muhammad Ayub. Great vid as always. Dr. Zed on Thrall. Okay, man. GG. All right, Dr. Zed, doing something a little bit different today. We've got a mount for you. So by default, you got something good. The Frightened Kodo, which is different. I have no idea what this looks like, actually. Can we see? I Okay, well, GG, bro. There's very few of them on the realm. You also get a Yojamba Isle Hearthstone. Not just good for the uh, future TBC patch either, man. I've been using it just if I ever want to go to Northern Stranglethorn. And we'll just give you a Mod Podge of different... Uh, transmogs super good uh, gift now because you can just put it in your little uh, transmog wardrobe and uh, that's really nice and easy and there you go dude gg as always leave a comment in the comment section below on any ascension video and you have a chance of winning something in my next ascension video at least up until we run out of giveaway stuff i've got quite a few videos for the future in that regard but if you ever want to send something to give back uh just send it to mcdoubles and you can uh, give back to people who are in the community okay guys so truth is i wish i could do more but i gotta get this video out today it's the very last day of the month Month, and it's actually been a really really slow not so good month you know i'm really hoping ascension comes in really really hard in 2023 um just for the sake of me in the channel if i'm totally real with you uh because you know what i wanted to do so much with season eight and i've already spoke about it so i try not to speak about it much anymore but they did drop the ball a bit and it hurt me bad you know i'm sure it's hurt them as well you know but still dragon flight was cool and stuff but i couldn't see how i was going to keep playing that one long term i just i don't know you know it's, it's retail most of the people on this channel they don't think fondly of retail and i'm really right there with y'all you know what i mean i like to like it because it's wow but it's also yeah like i said it's retail wrath classic i might jump on it's still technically retail though so that's why i'm looking at private servers turtle wow's cool i do like it we did the christmas event and stuff like that but uh there's a lot going there and i feel like we already kind of sucked that turtle wow enthusiasm out of everybody right like we did a huge series it got massive views i am absolutely not going to be a downer on turtle wow i love that little server but it's kind of weird right now like Torda, the head person for it, she's disappeared and uh, no clue why. And uh, that's been weird because I was like, why is it like this person's blocked me? So apparently they want me to go to this other guy who I never heard of until recently called Jamie. And I say, hey, Jamie, I'm told to ask you everything that I'd ask Torda. So are any plans for a fresh server, bro? Because like, if we're real, you are missing out big time. Like you guys might not know what you're doing is all I'm saying. And I'm not saying that as a player. In my head, I'm actually thinking about it more on the business side of things too. It's like, if I was the head of Turtle Wow, I would immediately make a fresh server. The original server was already there. Everybody will always play there if they want to, because they did when there was less than 100 people for like three years straight, let's not forget. And most of the people, based literally on the fact that so many changes came out way late into Turtle Wow when it didn't even have people playing the server, is that, you know, 99% of the people that have played played on there never got to play any of its fresh custom content when it was actually in its heyday because it didn't even exist in its heyday. I'm talking about even the big stuff, not just the quests and quest zones, but that's actually good enough. Uh, but the dungeons? Like, I remember my biggest gripe when I got to finally get to 60 and try the new dungeons was, yeah, the gear sucks. Not because it actually sucks, but because not only does some of it suck in comparison to what I could just go into an MC real quick and get, or hell, a Nax. Like, I could literally get boosted carried in so many ways and not even because of being a YouTuber. Like, it's just so easy when it's a fully progressed server. But also 
some of it required grinds, like 1% drop chance grinds that are just not worth it, despite the fact that it would be if it was fresh and it would be super exciting. So like if I was trying to like make this server as good as possible, I would just release Turtle WoW 2 or whatever you want to call it and just make the original realm the legacy realm because that's the literal smartest thing you can do for both money and player base happiness and size. I mean, you're going to reinvigorate it. And everybody's opposition points to that are just moot. Like, you have to prove what I said wrong. I don't think you can. So he starts off like, I could already tell what's going on because he's given me a corporate answer and a corporate way of typing, right? So he says, it's a very delicate and difficult to answer question, is it? And I can only speak in possibilities and not definitive plans. While we're not completely opposed to it, it is not on the- I can hear like a politician's deeper voice trying to like wave his hands and speak to me, right? It is not on the table right now, as there's a lot of problems that come with it, and we'd rather focus on improving the already existing realm and world we've built up, which doesn't actually make any sense considering what I've said. So that makes me feel like, oh no, I thought something might happen with Turtle Wow, you know? But who knows? Something could come out. Something might happen. We might find some ideas. We definitely will. And we'll see what happens in that regard. But now here I am at the end of 2022. And you know what? Overall, I'm actually really happy with what has went down with the channel, to be real with you. I mean, I'm living a little mini dream for myself right now, able to do this full time, which means I can pay my rent basically in my bills, which is the bare minimum. And that's okay. As I get older and as the world progresses, I really look around me and I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what to do with my life. I don't even know what's going on in the world, to be honest with you. I'm not even talking about the whole wide world, you know, like I'm smart enough not to give much of a shit about that. I'm talking more about just my own mini world. Like things could genuinely go absolutely haywire or things could just continue slow and you know, the way it has been, which I'd be cool with. It's definitely the most stable and happy I've simultaneously felt, but it's not perfect. But I guess what I'm trying to get at is, guys, is that 2022, we're at the end. It's been great. Hope you guys have a happy New Year's. Hope the channel can keep growing into 2023. Looking forward to Project Deus or Deus, whatever the hell. You know I don't care. You know I'm never going to pronounce it right. What? Why would you even do that name? No offense to Zach. Like, it's actually a cool name thematically and stuff. Like, it's supposed to mean, like, God and whatever, right? But uh, with most people in this freaking community and everything speaking English and then the ones that do a lot of them have accents like so many people are gonna mess that name up but anyway like there's that one we've got ascension hopefully with chapter two or maybe it's gonna be chapter one if they don't consider what we are in right now as chapter one we will see uh, it could be like the prologue right now you know what I mean but yeah we'll see what happens with that I mean they really have to come in strong and they know it if they don't deliver that's a big F and yeah who knows what else could possibly come out to be honest with you that's interesting and worth playing maybe another MMO we did lost Stark once upon a time for like a month and that did pretty well but yeah we will see let me know in the comment section below if you have anything interesting that i should have my eyes on because ever since i stopped watching streams and stuff like that i feel like i'm out of the loop you know what i mean but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the fire tank craig would be proud it was fun to play but i'll see you guys in the next video mcdoubles out